Mm. In this example, we're going to look at time and naught interrupts. Uh, up on the screen now is an example web page. And I'm taking the example code. Copy that. And paste it into MPLabX. Now it's useful to have the special function registers visible. And you get that from window simulator, sorry, pick memory views, special function registers. Um, it's useful to have IO pins visible. That comes from window simulator IO pins. And the first time you use that, you have to manually click on add pin, new pin. And I've added RB0 all the way through to RB7, which is all the port B pins. Uh, this variables window is useful. Um, we're watching port A, port B and my count. Now to get that up for the first time, you go, you go into debug, new watch. And you can choose port A and port B from a list and type my count in. Uh, to use, uh, to watch your own variables in the program, they have to be set up like this. So there's a section called U data for user data. My count is one byte where we can just store a number that's going to count from 0 to 255. We're reserving one byte. And this works fine with the simulator debug. Um, the old style is to use my count EQU, maybe initialize it to zero, and that doesn't work with the simulator debug. So maybe you need to use the newer method. Okay, can we debug the main project? And there it goes. And we can single step through the code. Let's hit the reset button. And step into the various functions. So the program resets to address zero. We then go to code init, that's the initialization. And there it is, and the we're going to call port init, which is a subroutine. And we're selecting memory bank one. We're moving zeros into the working register. Uh, we're clearing adcon one, that turns off the A to D converter. We're clearing ANCEL, which turns off analog input. It means we can use digital IO. And we're setting Tris A to be all outputs, and we're setting Tris B to be all outputs. So port A and port B will be 100% outputs, apart from RA5, which is input only. Return from that subroutine. Now we're going to set up timer naught. So clear the watchdog timer. I'm moving binary 2, which gives 1 to 8 pre-scaling. So eight instruction cycles in increments timer naught by one. Now that's stored in the option reg register. Um, switch on global interrupts, switch on timer naught interrupts, go back to memory bank naught, initialize my count to zero, clear the interrupt flag, store 250 into timer naught. That will count from 250 to 256, that doesn't take too long. Move it into timer naught, and that timer naught is now running. And now we're going to go into an idle loop. And the program just goes round and round that loop. Now, because I don't want to spend ages pressing F8. I've written an auto hotkey script to press F8 over and over again. So this program is now running all by itself. Okay, interesting things to watch. 
the LEDs. So that's displaying a 2. When the timer code runs, it's now displaying 3. And the timer naught register, that's counting from 250 up to 255. When you increment it to 256, that overflows the timer, it goes to zero and sets the timer naught interrupt flag. And that can be found in the intcon register. And it's bit two. And the mouse is now pointing at it. And that bit momentarily flashes to one whenever the timer naught overflows, which happens about now. And the interrupt code runs. Let's go back to manual stepping. Okay, any moment now. Here we go. Go to the interrupt subroutine handler. Increment my count and store the result into my account. Move my account into the working register. Copy the working register to port A, copy the working register to port B. So that updates the ports and the LEDs change. Then we clear the timer naught interrupt flag. Put 250 back into TMR naught. That actually moves the data and return from interrupt. So that's a quick guide to interrupts using timer naught. Mm.